All right, why do we find gorillas interesting? Maybe it's because they have a high IQ among animals. Or maybe it's because they are our evolutionary cousins. Or maybe, just maybe, we view them as jacked, unstoppable primates that no human can match up to. All those aspects are true to some extent. But there is one animal that has a say on a gorilla's fate, and that is the African leopard. Ah uh, yes, a good old natural rivalry. Nature sure doesn't like humans knowing the answer to this debate, since both of these animals are very elusive and not well documented. But regardless, it's time to address this debate with facts and actual scientific reasoning once and for all. Silverback Gorilla versus Leopard this is not a one-sided debate like tiger versus grizzly. This is a decently matched fight, but there is a winner for reasons I will discuss in this video. Now, to establish the premise, this theoretical fight will be between a silverback gorilla and an African leopard. We'll assume both animals are enraged and willing to fight to the end, so no backing out. We will also assume this is a head-on fight, so no claiming that a leopard can ambush the gorilla or catch it off guard. Alright, so we have some ground rules established. Let's begin the analysis. Size and Physique the gorilla's size is rather impressive when it comes to primate evolution. They are one of the largest primates our bloodline has to offer. Well, ever since humans surpassed the 500 pound mark. Gorillas inhabit the rainforest in equatorial Africa, and a silverback size greatly depends on its location. The silverbacks you typically see in zoos, which are western lowland gorillas, weigh on average around 310 pounds in the wild. That is relatively small compared to their eastern counterparts, with the eastern lowland gorilla weighing in around the 400 pound range. Now, leopards, leopards, leopards. They are the smallest of the four big cats, but that does not mean they should be underestimated. In fact, they are pound for pound the strongest living panthera. And did you know there are nine different subspecies of leopards? For this video, we'll be focusing on the African leopard, and their sizes, just like gorillas, vary by location. A male African leopard averages around 130 pounds. Now, it should be noted that African leopards that inhabit the rainforest slash jungles of Africa are generally considered more robust for factors that are currently unknown to proper scientific research, but their overall weight should be similar to their savanna counterparts. So, regarding sizes, there is a pretty big difference between the two. The average silverback gorilla is around three times the size of the African leopard. That factor would be a big problem for the leopard to get around if not for one thing. Leopards are active carnivores that have the proper weaponry to take down animals. So perhaps size isn't everything, the individual's weapons are another factor we have to consider, since, you know, they fight with them. Weaponry and Fighting IQ What would hurt more, getting hit by a hammer or getting gashed by a knife? This is not an objective question, but rather a metaphor for the two different types of weapons being used in this fight. Leopards are pretty stealthy animals, and they rely on that aspect to capture their prey. Now, how they manage to take down their prey is a unique combination of positioning and biting. Sure, they use their claws, but is typically only used for gripping onto their prey's body and securing a favorable position. They don't just straight up paw swipe when hunting, but they do so when fighting other felids. It's not that it won't do any damage, it's more or less that paw swipes don't really kill, but rather deter its rivals from gaining a favorable position. You could think of it as a jab or slap in the face, but not a knockout punch. However, in a battle with any primate, for example a gorilla, having claws would give the leopard a great advantage. It can rip through the anthropoid flesh rather easily. You know, sharp things hurt us. This is due to the fact that a primate's skin is tightly wrapped around its muscles, which rips rather easily, and gorillas are no exception to this fact. So, the silverback is definitely gonna receive some slashing wounds in a confrontation with a leopard. But what about biting? Who has a better and more effective bite? Well, this should be a no-brainer, but there is a lot of misinformation about a gorilla's and leopard's bite potency. First, we need to look at the individual skulls of each animal in order to understand their capabilities. 
On screen now is the skull of the average mountain silverback gorilla and the average male African leopard. As you can see, the gorilla has a larger skull, specifically in the cranium area. This implies that gorillas are more intelligent, which really comes to no surprise. Another thing this comparison shows is the mandible size difference. Gorillas have a more robust mandible system compared to leopards. This should imply that in theory, silverbacks should have a stronger bite. But that's actually not really the case given multiple reasons. First off, how strong do you think a gorilla's bite is? Many of you have probably heard that gorillas bite with 1300 psi, but that is unfortunately false. There have been no scientific studies that even support that claim. It was just a falsified number made by poor judgment, and now it's floating around the biology community. Seriously, can anyone actually find the scientific research paper referencing that number? No? Well, regardless, there is a scientific study showing the true force of a gorilla's bite. And it comes to around, you ready? 503 PSI if you convert it correctly. Just for reference, that's around three times stronger than a human's bite. Yeah, that's far off from the 1300 PSI bite force claim. Now, regarding the leopard's bite force, there is also very little information regarding that too. Many sites claim that it's supposedly around 300 PSI, which would put it on par with a German Shepherd's. Does that really seem to make any sense? Leopards are not only larger than German Shepherd's, but they have a way better skull for killing. When referencing actual scientific data and converting the units correctly, a typical leopard's bite force comes to around 458 psi. This means that a gorilla's and leopard's bite forces are on par with one another, but that does not mean they output the same damage. There are more factors to consider, like dentistry and skull shape. Gorillas have relatively flat jaws that are pressed against their face. Furthermore, their teeth are also built for eating plants and not ripping flesh. Their large canines are also more fragile than the leopards. This is because they are used for intimidation purposes. Now, the leopard, on the other hand, has a nearly perfect skull for killing. Its canine teeth are more robust and has unique dentistry specifically built for a carnivorous diet. For example, leopards have carnasia teeth that are used for slicing flesh, but gorillas do not. The leopard's jaws can also open up at a wider angle, and its snout protrudes from its skull. All those aspects give the leopard not only a bite reach advantage, but also a more effective bite for killing and causing harm. And yes, a leopard's knife-like weaponry would be troublesome for the gorilla, if not for one thing. It has to get really close to the silverback in order to dish out damage. And the silverback is not just going to let that happen so easily. A silverback's arms are huge and powerful. After all, they do most of their locomotion using them. Their arm span is about double the size of the average male humans. That would give it a good reach advantage in a confrontation with a leopard. A gorilla's arms are also used for climbing trees, manipulating objects, and of course for brawling purposes. And speaking of brawling, who fights better, a gorilla or a leopard? This is a bit of an odd question, but it technically does have an answer. Gorillas. Well, we all know what they're capable of. They are insanely powerful primates that love to display their strength and wrestle their opponents. They are the brawling type of animals, meaning that they don't actively hunt and kill, but rather just spar with their rivals to drive them out of their territory. They are obviously great grapplers given their bulky upper body and opposable thumbs. Now, when it comes to striking, this is where it gets a bit iffy. Gorillas have poor control over their individual muscles, unlike humans humans. For example, we work out specific muscles like the bicep and do more dexterous movements with our arms. A gorilla's anatomy makes it such that when they do tasks like striking or throwing, they use their entire arm muscle as a unit, much like a robotic arm. This translates to overall more force being put behind the swing of an arm, but much less accuracy and preciseness. This also means that gorillas don't really punch, but more or less just club, push, and swat at their opponents. Now, comparing a silverback's fighting technique to a leopard's, it's pretty interesting. A gorilla would be more dexterous and can use a wider range of techniques given its opposable thumbs, 
limb anatomy, and cognitive advantage. On the other hand, to put simply, leopards are master hunters. They take any advantage they can get to kill their prey. And that almost always means ambushing rather than a head-on fight. And surprisingly, they do consume a decent bit of primates, including baboons, and yes, sometimes gorillas. And speaking of hunting, we should probably address the big elephant in the room, that being the confrontations of gorillas and leopards in the wild. But before we dive further into this topic, it should be noted that these quote-unquote recorded statistics are very limited due to the leopards and gorillas' elusive nature. With that being said, there is context behind leopard predation on gorillas. First things first, leopards don't really hunt large prey as many believe. A study was conducted where they track the preferred leopard prey choice, which weighed between 20 to 88 pounds. This puts juvenile gorillas in the preferred hunted weight range, but not fully grown adults. Leopards, just like most big cats, are not that successful when they hunt. In fact, there are reports of chimpanzees chasing away leopards from their own prey, just because the panthera was close by. If a couple male chimpanzees can chase away a leopard, imagine what a silverback gorilla can do. However, However, some may bring up the fact that gorilla remains have been found in leopard scats. That is true, no one is disagreeing with that claim, but just like the tiger and bear situation, the remains in the scat does not tell a complete story. It does not address how the gorilla was killed. All it means is that the gorilla was consumed by the leopard. For example, a leopard could have sneak attacked a juvenile gorilla while it was sleeping at night. Also, the remains that are found in leopard scat were juvenile and not fully grown gorillas. Basically, the only documented evidence of gorilla remains being found in leopard scat was this gorilla's big toe. By doing some dimensional analysis, we can tell that this pedal digit is around 2 inches. A fully grown silverback's pedal digit is usually around 3 inches in length. But I digress. Sure, scat remains indicates predation, but actual recorded reports are another thing we have to consider. In multiple reports analyzed by biologists, the encounters between gorillas and leopards describe the leopard as either trying to flee from confrontations or displaying defensive behavior. This inherently shows that leopards want to avoid head-on confrontations with gorillas. And this makes sense since healthy adult gorillas are out of the leopard's preferred weight range of prey. In addition to that, leopards like to attack at night since it maximizes the success rate of an ambush. However, like I said earlier, they are not always successful. In fact, in one instance, a local heard a fight break out between a leopard and a gorilla at night, with the leopard being found dead in the morning. And if we take basically the only reputable account of a leopard killing a silverback and surviving, it wasn't a head-on fight in the light of day. The account goes as follows. Followed. The leopard attacked an adult gorilla at night while it was sleeping and was rudely waken up by the ambush. This freaked out the gorilla, which made it tumble down the slope to die. So basically, the leopard pulled off a scar from Lion King. In fact, the only reliable account of a leopard physically killing a silverback gorilla resulted in the mutual deaths of one another. So there wasn't even a solid winner since they both died due to injuries sustained. And that's about it for reliable documented encounters of the leopard and gorilla confrontations. The other ones you may hear about are more or less exaggerated stories or assumptions based on the environment but no direct evidence. It also should be noted that gorillas being part of a leopard's diet is so trivial that it cannot be properly attributed to a significant percentage. So now that we got the basics straightened out, it's now time to determine a verdict. Alright, we have our stats. So, who would win in a fight between a silverback gorilla and an African leopard? If this fight takes place in an open field, I would say the gorilla would win with high difficulty. The silverback is around three times the size of the average male leopard. Thus, there is a notable size and power gap between the two. The gorilla's arms and lengthy reach would likely batter the leopard before the felid could inflict a lethal blow. It should be noted that the gorilla would likely 
likely walk out with some wounds due to its anthropoid skin. But just remember, a silverback is out of the preferred weight range of the leopard's prey options. Gorillas are also decently more intelligent than the leopard and have opposable thumbs, which would simply just give the silverback more of an edge in a head-to-head -head confrontation. Now, if the fight took place in a rainforest, I see the odds of the leopard jumping up quite a bit, but I still think the silverback would squeak out a win more often than not.